Hello, Edisto. On this podcast, we're going to dispel or debunk or at least plant some seeds of doubt in your head about the story of Julia Legree, the little girl who was supposedly buried alive at the Presbyterian Church in the Legree tomb, or crypt as you would call it. There's a lot of folklore that this little girl got yellow fever and died and was buried prematurely there. And then when they went to bury her brother who had fought the Civil War and died and reopened the tomb, they saw her bones there at the door where her claws had been scratching on the door, screaming, trying to get out. Her bones were there. She was dead. She she supposedly died in that tomb. Well... Maybe not. I want you to watch this with Mr. Bruce Orr and I and uh, give us your thoughts about it. And uh, hello, Edisto. Hello, Edisto. I'm with Bruce Orr right now, and he's a ghost storian. Ghost storian. And tell us how you got that nickname. I got a chance to work with Ghost Hunters. Kevin Kane, a producer with Ghost Hunters, nicknamed me the Ghost Storian since I'm a ghost historian. So that's how that came about. Wow, that's very interesting. Well, we've got a historic graveyard here as well. It's in the Presbyterian Church graveyard. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's called a graveyard or a grave site. There's, a graveyard is attached to a church. Right. right. Anything that ends in yard, graveyard, churchyard, or play yard, it's oh. attached. Oh, okay. And a cemetery would not be. Well, we have a crypt there. Is it a crypt? Is that what it's called? A crypt called? or a mausoleum or a tomb. There, it's oh, it's all three. It's all, uh, yeah, people interchange it. All right. Okay, so it's a mausoleum crypt tomb, and it's <laughs> called the Julia Legree Crypt. And the story goes, I want you to tell, there's two versions of this story, and we're about to open up your mind to realize that there's not just the story that you've heard to be concrete, factual, that a little girl, which was not a little girl, a little girl supposedly was buried alive there. So go ahead and take the floor there and tell us all about the story that I know. Right. The most... Uh, well-known story involves Julia Legree and the story is that she contracted some sort of illness such as yellow fever and she passed away and they placed her in the tomb but when they got ready to bury the next person and they opened up the door they had a horrible sight they found out that she was not exactly dead when they put her in there she was in a coma she was able to get the top off of the coffin was able to get out of the coffin but she could not remove the stone So she died a terrible, horrible, tragic death inside on the floor of that crypt. Now, of course, that destroyed the family, devastated the family. The family did not last long after that, knowing that they had actually entombed their child alive. Well, after they passed away, the door on the tube would not stay shut. The door would keep opening. This big, massive stone door that the child couldn't even remove would open. Every time they'd get it closed, they'd go back the following morning and find the thing open. So they chained it. They put an eye bolt through the big marble stone, ran a chain around it, put links around it, attached it all the way around the building, came out the next morning and found the thing, tore off its hinges, laying in the floor, suspended by the chain. Now, they took the chain off of it, and they since disposed of this somewhere where nobody seems to know where they disposed of the door, but the crypt is now open. Of course, all the bodies, coffins, and things are removed. There's no access to that, but... This tomb is open because they could never keep the door shut because of the person that was entombed in there. Some people say there's no remains whatsoever inside, but we we don't know. There may be remains inside down below. It seems like they could thermograph that and find out. They could. Anyway, so that was the first story, almost like it was the white story told by white people, right? Well, they're... There are versions of stories. Right. Somewhere in between the mixture of stories probably lies the truth. Somewhere in it. <laughs> a mixture of both. Right. But when I started doing my project for a, a book titled after my company, Lost in Legend. Lost in Legend, that is my company. And the, that came about because usually the facts get lost in the legend. Okay. As you were just discussing. So right. if you look in the legend long enough, you have to try to sift through it to find the facts and then take those facts and start working backwards and find the story. Right, right. So you've got, you know, hundreds of years of people playing that game of telephone. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody adds something to it each time or somebody Mm -hmm. takes something away from the story each time. 
Well, when it gets to this story, I did that book Lost in Legend in 2018, started doing a little research, and I knew the story that we all knew, but I knew there was problems with it. Because growing up in the 70s, the, the victim was always a boy. So how did it become a girl? Well, going back and doing the research, I grew up with a lot of different books I enjoyed, but there was one by an author named Nell S. Graydon. It's called South Carolina Ghost Tales, and it featured the story of the Legree tomb. Yeah. Well, when she had that book published in 1969, I believe, and it became very, very popular in the 70s, she made a statement in that book saying that there was a young female child entombed in there who had died, I believe, of diphtheria. Mm -hmm. She was entombed in there, and then when they went back, they found out that the child was alive and had perished in the tomb, had been buried alive, according to the story. She never said it was Julia Legree. She said it was a female child that was put in there. Mm -hmm. Now, in researching it, going back and looking at it, if you go into the tomb, who was apparently Julia Legree, buried and tombed alive at six years old, you'll find three gravestones in there. If you look at Julia Legree's, it says that she died at the age of 22. Yes. I Not six it. years exactly, old. Exactly. Exactly. So, so and boom, there goes, boom, that, there goes that whole theory life. about it being a girl. Now, if you look over next to Julia Stone, there is a stone for Hugh Swinton Legree, who said he died at six, and it has the word son on it. And then the third stone in there is John Legree. So, there are two different stories. And when I was doing the research, I knew the story. I knew how Julia Legree came to be the one that was entombed through the phraseology of Nell S. Graydon. Right. Um, so I knew there was supposed to be a boy, and I believed it was Hugh Swinton Legree who was the one that was entombed. But I started doing the research, searching around the island, and of course this is a South Carolina island, a coastal island. So you get into the Gullah Geechee culture. Seriously. You dude, get seriously, into yeah. the uh, culture that evolved during enslaved times when people were enslaved and their belief systems. And then you get into hoodoo and root magic. Roots. Roots. Yeah. yeah. Somebody put the roots on somebody. Exactly. I've heard that. I've heard that. Story. That is. Yeah. And hoodoo mm -hmm. and root magic is very prevalent when it comes to the coastal islands. And, and also some, in people, some people believe very real. Yes. I was fortunate enough to get introduced to somebody that was involved in hoodoo. Hmm. And they told me a different story. <laughs> Let's hear uh, this story is a lot more creepier if you get into it. All right. When, we, when you go through the story, what you have is he married Julia in 1848. She passed away in 1852 at the age of 22. Mm -hmm. Two years later, his son died. Hugh Swinton Legree, at the age of six, he puts him in the tomb. Now, according to Nell S. Graydon, they opened up that tomb to put a child in mm -hmm. who was deceased that was visiting, who apparently had died from diphtheria. Mm -hmm. That's not uncommon. That goes back to even Christianity, Christianity practices. Mm -hmm. Jesus was even put in a borrowed tomb. Yeah. So they would put the child into the tomb to keep this disease from spreading. Well, imagine, if you will, this child's been dead for two years. They opened it up, as she said, in the 1850s. Well, what if it was 1856? They opened it up, and he finds out his son had been buried alive. He had, in fact, killed his own child. Oh, how do you live with that? He didn't. He <laughs> died in 1856, exactly two, two years. years. <laughs> so you got Julia, 1852, his son in 1854, and him in 1856, keeping to that two-year increments of the hoodoo curse. So which is scarier? Oh, that one. That one, definitely. That and that far. is what the root doctors and the hoodoo magic says happened. He got in on the wrong side of a root doctor and basically <laughs> displeased him and got cursed for it. Does anyone know how he displeased this root doctor? No, that was not known. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you're going back into days of slavery days of entitlement and empowerment on the island and it was a culture shift right major culture shifts and of course you know this is you're talking pre-civil war mm. so you know there's that mentality that framework that mindset of that time so it probably wouldn't take in a whole lot to displease a root doctor <laughs> during that time <laughs> okay. a hoodoo doctor but that's what the curse was so 
That is a, a very interesting story because for years we've just heard this. And I went in the tomb, crypt, whatever it was. I went in there just to do the Halloween special. And I noticed that Julia must have been in her 20s. So mm -hmm. I was like, how could she be a little girl? Right. And then I put the story up on Hello Edisto, and then you were kind enough to say, right. you might want to think about this. A yeah. mutual friend of ours contacted me and referred me to it to listen to an EVP that you had. And then I listened to the whole series, and I thought, you know, I might want to reach out and share. And that's what happened. That's how we met. I'm very glad you did. Maybe our tour guides can actually add this addendum to their story and even because who knows what really happened right we, like i said somewhere in the middle may lie the truth Ooh, that was scary you can catch bruce at bulldog tours in downtown charleston south carolina he does uh ghost tours with a group called bulldog tours and he does the city jail which is the biggest, baddest, mamma jamma, scariest of all the tours. And call Bulldog and ask him to hook you up with Bruce, and uh, you'll be scared to death. And make sure you pick up some of his books. No, pick them all up. But the last one we just read was from this book, his book, Lost in Legend. And uh, that was his take on the Julia Legree story, the Who Do story the witchcraft story, the voodoo, you know, that you do. <laughs> Anyhow, we're going to have a great year here at Hello Edisto, and we want you to be a part of it. So please make sure that you uh, email me if you want to be on the show, and it's uh, helloedisto at gmail.com. Thank you for being with us once again. The people, the places you love and you know. Hello Edisto.